Hey friends, there's a Paul McCartney cover story in the new Mojo magazine, the current issue, where he credits Johnny Cash for his inspiration to start Wings. He said when the Beatles were done, he had a few different options. One of them was to give up music altogether, and that wasn't going to happen. He could form some kind of a super group with Eric Clapton, something like that. He just wasn't really sure what to do. He says, after the end of the Beatles, I was faced with certain alternatives. He says, one was to give up music entirely and do God knows what. Hey, How you doing, man? Good. Uh, Mike Bassett, what are you doing? I have a YouTube channel. I'm talking about Johnny Cash and Paul McCartney, and that just seemed like a beautiful backdrop. Unfortunately, I might have to ask you to leave. I'm not supposed to be here? No, unfortunately What's not. your name, man? Huh? What's your name? I'm Matt. I'm Matt. I'm a Otis. Okay. I'll yeah. get out of here. I'm I, I, you're fine. You're just kind of right in the way of trucks coming in. And Is there a place I could be and do I this? I really don't allow it on the property, so all I, right. I do appreciate it. And Is it all right if I'm, like, uh, standing on the street and, like... Uh, I'd really rather you not. All right. Thank so you, man. I do appreciate it. Take care, Thank man. You. Busted. <laughs> oh, man. I got busted. I wasn't supposed to be there, and that guy was really nice about it, so no harm, no foul, live and learn, and all that good stuff. But back to our story. At the end of the Beatles, I was faced with certain alternatives. One was to give up music entirely and do God knows what. Another was to start a super band with very famous people, Eric Clapton and so on. I didn't like either, so I thought, how did the Beatles start? It was a bunch of mates who didn't know what they were doing. That's when I realized maybe there's a third alternative. To get a band that isn't massively famous. To not worry if we don't know what we're doing because we could form our own character by learning along the way. It was a real act of faith. It was crazy, actually. And then Paul McCartney brings Johnny Cash into the picture. He says, we were in bed one night newly married when Johnny Cash came on the television with a new band he'd formed with Carl Perkins, a big hero of mine. There they were, playing with some country musicians I'd never heard of, looking like they were having fun. I thought, there's Johnny, he's back, he's doing it. So I turned to Linda and said, do you want to form a band? And she went, sure. That's how our relationship was. Do you want to go and live on a farm in Scotland? Why not? So that was the inspiration, watching Johnny Cash on television and reminding him that music's supposed to be fun and you can just do it with the people you love and do it the best you can. And that's the inspiration to put wings together. That's in the current issue of Mojo Magazine. You should pick up a copy and read the cover story on Paul McCartney. This also reminds me of a quick mention of Paul McCartney and Johnny Cash's great autobiography. Uh, going from memory here, the story was Paul McCartney was vacationing in Jamaica and Johnny Cash owned a house in Jamaica that he liked spending time at. And uh, they found out about each other there, invited Paul over to dinner. And they're looking out the window and there's a moon, beautiful moon outside. And um, they wrote this song, Moon Over Jamaica, which they both recorded. I believe McCartney's version is a little bit more of a reggae feel. Johnny's autobiography is really, really good. It's written in a very plain spoken manner, like diary entries. And if you haven't read it, you should pick up a copy. I think you'll enjoy it. But uh, I'm going to get some coffee and go to band practice. And it'd be kind of fun if you guys came along with me. Hey, Kevin, why don't you tell me that story about Switzerland you told me? Yeah, so I'm, I'm on the road in Switzerland and we're uh, going to France and we're going through this really long tunnel. And we get near the end of the tunnel and uh, one of the guys in the band really needed to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and there's no bathroom. And so he asked the tour manager to pull over so he can go uh, pee. And uh, the tour manager's like, man, they're gonna pull us over. The cops are gonna show up. The cops are gonna show up. So, uh, but man, I really gotta go. So we pull over and he goes to pee. And right when he gets done and starts getting back in the van, the cops show up and they ask the driver, what's going on? He's like, oh, I think we got a coolant leak. So the, as we're driving off, the cop puts his finger in the pee and <laughs> yeah. What you got there, Gordon? 
This is a 2002 Custom Shop Fender Stratocaster. It's a, it's supposed to be like a 1956 Fender. Okay. But I call it my hammer usually because <laughs> I have a, a real 1963 Strat, but I don't always bring it out. So I take the hammer to work. How many uh, gigs you think you have on that thing? It's one over 200 a year for the last 20 years, so wow. whatever it is, that's yeah, a lot of, a lot a, of gigs. <laughs> it's been refretted probably five times. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's a, it's a good guitar. It's broken in just right, too. Yeah, it used to be new, and now it's, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's just a real good guitar. Beautiful. And your amp is a... Uh... That's a 1966 Princeton. And it's um, it's in such good shape. A lot of people think it's fake. <laughs> so what you got there, Tim? 1974 P bass. I bought it in Chicago at Rock and Roll Vintage. Uh, it had just come out of the Dallas Guitar Show, and smelled like uh, it had been in a house fire. <laughs> and even had a name. They were calling it the Roach. <laughs> So it smelled like fire for, not anymore, but it smelled like fire for about the first six months that I had it. And uh, I came up with a whole story about uh, how it came to be uh, that I probably won't get into right now. But What's the back look like? Let me see the back. Oh, yeah. Just as good. This is good? Nice. That's beautiful, man. Hey Devin, tell me about tell me about that sign behind you. What is it? That's a um, that's a cue card by uh, w the great Wally from Saturday Night Live. Uh, I got it as a Christmas present. I thought you know it was a uh, as Tim said earlier, a little Bernard Purdy ish. <laughs> that's my boy. So you know, I thought, thought it'd uh, be cool to bring in and sit over here by the drums. Hell yeah, that's beautiful. Let me get close to it. Show the people. With a brother in the kitchen Bringing green beans and hat While the father worked in a coal mine Doing chores he'd left for them They say a mother left I took the family car On a cold midwestern evening Searching for a little peace of mind Somewhere on the other side
shovel across to the bench. She tries to stop to wake the children. Tangled in her long black hair. She dreams of leaving him and putting him in jail. I was an iron boss. She read the sins of her father.